I'm Andy the Northern Diver and welcome to another edition of my weekly blog. In this episode we're going to be covering dive cylinders and this is aimed at new or inexperienced divers that may be going out for the first time to buy the Roan diving cylinder. We're going to cover the different sizes and materials that these come in, the different uses we can have for the different cylinders that are available. We're going to cover the service schedule and little hints and tips and ways you can avoid costly repairs to maintain the life of your cylinder for as long as possible. So I can see laid out then, we've got a selection of cylinders, the painted white and black ones are steel, first being a 0.6 BCD inflation cylinder, then we've got a 3 litre pony or bailout cylinder, a 10 litre, a 15 litre, twin 12 litre cylinders, banded and manifolded, and an Alley 80, roughly equivalent to 11 litres. The Alley 80 then, it's got a modular valve. This is given away by the fact that there's the yellow tape near the blanking plate that allows it to be manifolded. It also has a dust cover in the DIN fitting. Now the twin 12s then, they have a right and left modular valve connected with a manifold that when turned all the way open, it can allow both cylinders to be used in conjunction with each other. It gives you a full 24 litres, or when closed, you isolate the two. This is the 15 litre. It has a carry handle and it has a black boot to allow it to stand up freely. Now the 10 litre has a modular valve. It has no boot to its base, so it won't be able to stand up. You'll have to lie it down. Much like the three litre pony, no boot, and it has a standard pillar valve. So moving on to the suit inflation then, it has an A-clamp style connection and a flat base. Okay then, so what I've lifted out in front of us are two different cylinders. The one on the right, the white painted cylinder, is a steel 15 litre cylinder. The one on the left, the grey coloured one, is an aluminium 11 litre or 80 cubic feet size cylinder. The main difference being, one's made of aluminium, one's made of steel. See the steel one, with it having a rounded base, has a rubber boot, whereas the aluminium cylinder has a flat bottom, therefore can stand up freestanding. The main difference between the two materials is the aluminium cylinder is quite neutrally buoyant and almost positively buoyant once it becomes empty, as the steel one remains negatively buoyant, full or empty of whatever gas. So on top of the 15 litre cylinder, you can see a carry handle, it allows us to carry the cylinder quite easily to the filling station without the need to use the actual top of the valve which can cause damage. I've now lifted out a 12 litre twin set, commonly used by technical divers. These are two 12 litre steel cylinders, banded together with stainless steel twinning bands and joined together by a right and a left modular valve is a manifold which allows for both cylinders to be used in conjunction with each other which gives a a total wet volume of 24 litres or isolated by the, the valve in the middle to create two independent 12 litre cylinders. The bottoms of these cylinders are shaped like wine bottles and the aluminium cylinder is flat. So far then we've covered the different sizes and the different materials that your dive cylinder can be made from. The next thing you need to know is how often you need to have it serviced and how you go about maintaining that cylinder. So every two and a half years, you have to have your cylinder taken to a test centre where it has either a visual or a hydrostatic test. The way you go about knowing what it needs and when it's required is located on the top of the cylinder. This sticker lets us know who performed the previous test, which was, in this case was Northern Diver, and the next test is due in February 2021. In case the sticker is removed, we have an area where the paint's been removed, we have the tester's mark, the year, and the month of the most recent test. So this lets us know that in August 2018, a hydrostatic test was carried out by a Northern Diver. So on receiving your cylinders back from your test centre, you should always get a certificate from them, and I'd, I'd very much be an advocate of keeping hold of that somewhere safe, just in case you do encounter a problem at a filling station. As well as servicing the cylinder, it's important to know how you maintain your own equipment. So looking at this pony cylinder then, one of the points or hints and tips that I could give you is that when you strip down your equipment ready for having it refilled whilst at the dive site, the likelihood there's be some moisture within the pillar valve. 
So what you can do to reduce the moisture that's in your pillow valve, which will then be blown into the cylinder on refill, is to grab the hand wheel, crank it open a couple of times, and you'll watch the as the air comes or the gas comes out the cylinder, the moisture will be blown out. It's important to do that because with this cylinder being made of steel, water gets inside and the inside will become rusty. And over time, it can be detrimental to the life of the cylinder. So these cylinders being made of steel are covered in zinc and then powder coated in, in whatever colour generally us divers prefer. As you can see, all, most of mine are white. To protect the paint and the galvanisation and prevent corrosion of the cylinder, you can buy a cover. Now these covers are just plastic mesh, comes in all different colours, but different sizes suitable for your cylinder. You can literally thread the cylinder onto the mesh. You can put a zip tie around the top, tape off or trap the bottom within the boot of the cylinder and that gives an all around protection to the paintwork of the cylinder prolonging its life. So my last piece of advice then is around the pillar valve itself. They're generally made of brass so very delicate should they fall over and they're, they're certainly liable to get bits of moisture, wild animals, dust, debris, all sorts of stuff in there. So you can buy a cap that just neatly screws in for whilst it's in stowage stops moisture getting in there again as we talked about before and any sort of damage should it fall over it's, it's quite large in comparison to the, the overall size of the pillar valve so that will take a nice knock um, and prevent the pillar valve or hopefully prevent the pillar valve from getting too much damage so if you have any further questions or points or queries that you'd like to raise about the topics covered in this video please post them in the comment section below don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like what we're doing. If you'd like to see any previous videos we've done, I've got one where we went diving with seals in the Farn Islands and the one at the top covers the last episode. So thanks for watching again. I'll see you on the next episode. I'm Andy the Northern Diver. I'll see you on Insta.